And then my friend Maleva, I had given her my pilot. Right. Um, and she called me. I remember this very vividly. She called me um, and said, yeah, well, I read your pilot. Um, I got to say, it, it, it is not my cup of tea. <laughs> um, she's like, I don't know why you're writing these sort of like dramas that are semi-funny. She goes, you're a really funny guy. I don't know why you're not like writing funny stuff. Right. Because I'd written one play at that point um, called uh, Das Wandern des de Trinkli de Erte, I believe, um, <laughs> which I had put up in college, which was a um, <laughs> it was a really weird idea. But it was basically what it was, was I, I would come out before the show and talk about my beloved German grandmother. Of this course. is all fake. Yeah. Uh, who would read stories to me <laughs> when I was young um, from these storybooks, and she um, had left them to me when she recently passed away. Okay. <laughs> and I don't speak German, um, but I remember her sort of like, <laughs> I remember, I kind of remember how they went. And so I, these are my translation of this German author's right. plays. <laughs> and then they were like, oh it was it was like a half an hour show that was sort of a weird <laughs> clunkily written english translation of a very strange german musical and it was just you and it well it wasn't me doing it it was like i had i directed it but okay. i came i came out and introduced it and then and it was just like you it need was you remount this right now at ucb I, yeah if i could find have middle ditch do it. it he oh. would be perfect for it so i and i remember <laughs> that's so funny i remember when i did that and i'd written a lot of plays at this sure. point my friend said, oh, this is the most you thing that you've done. Right. And so that combined with Maleva saying, I don't know why you're writing these weird dramas. Write comedy. I, and she goes, my, look, my, friend, uh, my friends have this night of comedy uh, at the comedy store. Right. And I think I could get them to agree to let you do something on it if you wanted to do something. And she's oh, like, great. She's like, I really think that you should just do comedy. Um. And so I said, okay, well, I think I think I could do something in that like sort of. And I was very inspired by the Andy Kaufman, Bob and David thing. I was like, I think I could do something sort of in that vein. Right. She's like, great, go do it. Um, I'll set it up. So she set it up with her friends who were Mary Lynn Rice Cub and um, C J Arabia, who did a show called Windows ninety five at the Comedy Store together. Okay. Um, and so. It was coming, and, and BJ and I were sort of working out what we were trying to do, and we worked out this act um, called The Fun Bunch, which was um, he and I were going to be this uh, in this improv, this uh, Valley improv group called The Fun Bunch, which was sort of an ironic title because there were only two of us, sure. which we thought was really funny. <laughs> and we basically were going to do improv for people, and then it sort of devolved into uh, this really horrible stuff happening, uh. um, which then ended up with him sodomizing me oh. <laughs> at the end. So it, it, we, I remember us kind of practicing it, and we went down into our practice space, which was the, the, uh, underneath our apartment. It was this uh, like common space, and we sort of practiced it for BJ's girlfriend. And she just was like, I don't know, guys. This is not good. <laughs> she goes, I, I can't say that this is going to go well for you. <laughs> and, I, and, and we were just like, no, I think I think there's something to it. <laughs> so I was really nervous, and we went up and we did the... So this is after you saw the, the, the Bob and yeah. the Cross and Bob show. Yeah, I was like, I don't and know. It kind of just... reminds me of stuff that they were doing. Because right. they, you know, if you remember the, that first season of Mr. Show, there was a lot of like... You know them pushing boundaries and stuff. I was like, I think I think this could really be something. So just with full bravado, we went up and did it. Um, and I remember, you know, and everyone was in the crowd. This is a this is a show that like Janine Garofalo and oh, Bob and she- David are at, and you know, like all these all these people who are the you know the the pinnacles of the alt scene. How know? did you how how does that happen? Because it was Mary Lynn. She just recommended it? 
Well, no, no, but this was a show that it, it wasn't. We didn't do the whole show. It was, it was like oh, eight, you were just like comedians. Gotcha. You, you know. were just the opener or whatever. Well, it wasn't. The, it was just like you know, you'd have six to eight acts on per gotcha. night. Okay. David would come up and do like. Gotcha. I remember David would come up and do stand up, and in the middle of it, he would do a whole bit with John Ennis about how he he needed to turn his car alarm off, and he would send <laughs> John on errands and stuff. Gotcha. So it was like a lot of breaking down the barriers between the sketch and stand up. Sure. You know, and so, all the performers watched everyone else's. and all the performers would gotcha. and, and there would be, you know, seven of these shows per week. And wow. you would just go to every single one every single night and hang out with these people and watch each other yeah. do the stuff. So but the first time I remember we went up there and David was there and people literally thought we were a shitty improv group <laughs> and we're like, oh, boy. <laughs> And we were getting like kind of nothing. Oh no! <laughs> and with our bad improv that we were doing, and then when the turn came in, where it started, like I forget exactly what happened to make like BJ upset at me for something I did in the improv. But that when the turn happened, I I just remember like the roar of laughter, <laughs> where people were like, "Oh, we've been duped into thinking this is a shitty improv right. group, but this is something else." And just the waves of laughter, you know, that went throughout the rest of it were really like, oh, holy shit, this is going, not only is this going well, but it's like getting some of the biggest laughs of the night. That's was, amazing. So, so we did it and, you know, it destroyed. Um, and, you know, Mary Lynn and CJ were like, that was great. Come back in two weeks if you want to do something in two weeks. That's awesome. Yeah, it was crazy. And then the second week we did a thing where we were the fun bunch again. And, um, I, I remember this bit a little better cause we would do it a lot, um, for like the next 10 years. But <laughs> I, I no was, <laughs> I was going to try stand up on my own for the first time. Okay. Um, and he was, BJ was really supportive of it. And I was like, I really want to, you know, I want to do stand up. You know, I, I don't want to do the improv anymore. I want to do stand up. And so I did like kind of bad stand up for a minute. And then I remember it took like my joke took a weird, like filthy turn, which um, people really laughed at. And then he would get really mad at it and really, really strange. It, it, like he would get really upset and go, no, I don't think you want to go that in that direction. And then I remember it took an even worse turn. I forget exactly what it said. And he got, he like came up and smacked me. He was like, what the fuck is wrong with you? What the, you know, there are important people watching. And he's like, you want to turn your mouth into a potty? You want to turn your mouth into a potty? Well, I'll turn it into a potty. And then he would pee in my mouth, oh. <laughs> which was fake, obviously, but so genius comedy right yeah there. so so and again just like our our bits when we were the fun bunch which was the ironic title because right. horrifying things would happen exactly i remember i would always like run off crying like fuck you i hate you i don't like you anymore and i would run out the the back of the comedy store so this is the second time and bj like would would wrap it up so I had to run out the back of the comedy store and then like kind of run all the way around and like up the up the um, stairs and all that. And meanwhile, this is the second time we did it. BJ goes off stage and he goes to the back of the room and there's Bob Odenkirk. And this is the first time he's seeing us. And this and bear in mind, this is like, you know, one of the reasons we started doing comedy. Of course, yeah. we, we saw this and we're really inspired by it. So Bob is like. Oh, uh, hey, man. Um, it's nice to meet you. And I miss all this, right? He's like, yeah, that was really funny. Um, I was thinking, uh, you know, I got this uh, HBO show, you know, and, uh, <laughs> you know, I was thinking maybe that you, you guys could write stuff for it, um, That's you know, amazing. and be be some of the writers on it or something. And and so BJ told me about all this and was like, holy fuck, like our second time? and yeah. He Bob is seeing something like sort of simpatico in this. It was it was crazy. It That's was really, insane. But it just opened up the entire world because you know two really funny bits in a row. And we did. I remember. I think we did like ten before we ever did one that wasn't all that good. Right. Or wasn't received all that well. Um, we just became comedians. You know, like I said earlier on. You know, once we did comedy a couple of times. Oh, now we're comedians. Right. So, and we were really accepted in that scene and it became, you know, people with whom I'm still friends with to this day. You know, Paul F. Tompkins was there. Sure. Um, I think he had moved to LA like three months before we started doing comedy and, you know, it just, it just was like, oh, suddenly I had a home. That's amazing. And, you know, then was working on Mr. Show. 